his mess between us and he thought of so lovely, although of his wonderful brother. And then as we're wrapping up breakfast, he said, you know, all this me. It's like we had no idea. And um, once we knew that that they were going to be uh, touring for the first time, yeah. we knew that something was going to happen. Then it was also a special time because uh, President Obama had just loosened the restrictions and would allow this kind of cultural interchange for the first time. Yeah. Uh, so there was a moment in time where we could make this film when Aldo was able to travel with relative ease to the States and, and, and collaborate with his brother and, and, and also the Mars Quartet. Um, sadly, that door that was open has now been slammed shut. We are hoping for, uh, for more opportunities to host Aldo um, and to see Aldo play in America. We'd love more, more Americans to experience this music. Well, I would love to hear um, from you a little bit about your uh, the experience with the production. I know it took about four years in the making. Uh, I see you on travel back and forth, also from Cuba to the U.S. Did, can you talk a little bit more? At the, on the same breath, if you can take a little bit of juxtapose the Cuban culture with the American culture via the two brothers, the food plays such a big part of the film. <laughs> like food and music are both uh, the very uh, very expressive parts of the film. So if you can if you can borrow that as um, a way to compare the going back and forth from one culture to another, one place to another. I've gone to Cuba pretty much every way but swimming. <laughs> I, I had direct flights during the, the good time from San Francisco to Havana. We've had to take circuitous flights through Mexico. We've flown through Miami. And right now, it's as far as I can tell, I think it's very difficult for us to go. Oh. Uh, well, of course, now, you know, COVID is also impacting uh, our ability to travel. But in terms of uh, compare and contrast Cuban and U.S. culture. That's actually part of why we made the film, was because we wanted to see the U.S. through, uh, through all those eyes and get a little sense of what Cuba looks like for Omar after living in the States all these years. And so, you know, the, the travel issues are mostly on the U.S. side. The Cubans are happy to have us come. Um, so, but in terms of a culture, well, I mean, you, you see it in the film, that it's such a different way of, of being, and, and the role of the arts is no different than the It's much more accessible. People pay the price of a, of a soda to go to the opera or the symphony, or it's available. And they do music not just by Cuban classical um, composers, but from Latin American composers that I've just never heard or heard of. Um, through the process of making this film, that will be a little awesome. I promised Marsha and Ken that I would play a little bit, uh, but if it wasn't for my promise, I tell you, it's not that, please don't judge my playing by what you're about to hear. He said they would love it anyway. It's like, well, let's yes, see. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so I'll play a little bit of uh, that beautiful uh, theme that is the theme of the movie. All right, let's do this. <laughs> 